In this video, I am going to discuss about tongue deviation in upper motor neuron versus lower motor neuron hypoglossal nerve pulse. Hypoglossal nerve supplies all the intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of the tongue except the palatoglossus and possibly the genuhyoid muscle. Suppose this red symbol indicates all intrinsic and extrinsic muscles on the right side of the tongue and this green one indicates all the intrinsic and extrinsic muscles on left side of the tongue and suppose this red symbol indicates right sided genioglossus which after contraction causes deviation of tongue to left side and this green symbol indicates left sided genioglossus muscle which after contraction causes deviation of tongue to right side normally the tongue is in neutral position the cerebral center for the tongue movements is located in the lower part of the precentral gyrus and the hypoglossal nucleus is located in medulla oblongata. Suppose the smaller cube indicates the nucleus for genioglossus and the larger cube indicates nucleus for all other intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of the tongue. The upper motor neuron innervation for all the intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of the tongue is predominantly bilateral and the upper motor neuron innervation for the genioglossus muscle is primarily crossed. The hypoglossal nerve on the right side supplies all intrinsic and extrinsic muscles on the right side and the left sided hypoglossal nerve supplies all the intrinsic and extrinsic muscles on the left side. Suppose there is upper motor neuron lesion involving the right sided corticolingual fibers there will be sparing of all intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of the tongue except the left genioglossus muscle because of primary crossed innervation the right genioglossus muscle will be normal hence it will lead to deviation of tongue towards the left side therefore in upper motor neuron lesions the tongue deviates to opposite side of the lesion and suppose there is lower motor neuron lesion involving right hypoglossal nerve there will be involvement of all intrinsic and extrinsic muscle on right side of the tongue and there will be sparing of left genioglossus muscle which will lead to deviation of tongue towards the right side therefore in lower motor neuron lesions the tongue deviates to same side of the lesion on protrusion and at rest it may deviate or curl slightly toward the healthy side because of unopposed action of the styloglossus which draws the tongue upward and backwards.